Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Zess and I make Rampai mini game tutorials. As usual, I would like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons who are supporting my channel and my work. It is very appreciated, so thank you so much. In this video, I'll show you how you can create a timed click counter in Rampai where the player can either click with the mouse on an image or press a button on the keyboard. Since the game will be timed, we have a countdown timer that shows the player how much time they got left, as well as a text that shows how many times they clicked. When the time runs out, a button will show up that allows them to play again, together with a text that says different things depending on how many points they got. To follow along with the tutorial, you're going to need a fresh vampire project in the size 1920 x 1080 pixels using the latest version of the Rampai engine. You will also need the image assets, which you can download from the description box below. We are going to be working with a bit of Python code as well, so it's good if you have at least some basic understanding of Python and things like variables, but if you don't, you might still find the tutorial interesting and useful either way. The script for this tutorial can be downloaded by my patrons in a tier supporter or higher, and a link to that is in the description box below. With that said, let's get into the video. Before we have a look at the code, make sure you've added all of the images into the images folder of your project so they are ready to be used. First, we are going to have a look at the main screen, which contains all the displayables for the minigame, which I've called click counter game. This screen is called from the start label in this example, as I want the screen to show immediately when the game starts. Now, depending on if you want the game to be controlled by using a key on the keyboard or the mouse, you will need to add different types of displayables here. To detect key presses on the keyboard when the screen is showing, we can use a displayable called key. This should be followed by a string value that represents the key you want by to detect. This string value will start with an uppercase K, followed by an underscore, and then the name of the key. In this case, I want the screen to detect presses for the key X, so I have written K underscore X. If you want a comprehensive list of all the different names for the different buttons on the keyboard, you can visit the link in the description box below. Then you'll have to scroll down a bit until you see a yellow box like this with all the different names of the keys. The action to run when the button is pressed is decided based on a condition. Here we check if the variable called count clicks is true, and if it is, then we run a custom Python function called click counter, which will count each key press. If not, then we don't do anything by specifying a null action. This variable is defined above the start label together with the other global variables we're going to need and we're going to go through what each of these are used for throughout the tutorial. This count clicks variable is therefore used to decide whether or not we want to count any key presses or clicks by the user. We of course only want to count clicks or button presses as long as the timer hasn't run out. So when it has run out, we will set this variable to false and therefore this key displayable will no longer call the function. If we have a look at the bottom of the screen, we can see the timer that is responsible for counting down time in the game, and it is set to run every second. The action here is also determined based on a condition that checks if a variable called countdown timer is more than zero. So as long as this variable is more than zero, we're going to keep subtracting one from it by using the set variable action. However, if it's zero, then we instead set the count clicks variable to false, which as I mentioned before, will cause the key displayables action to stop calling the function according to the condition. This timer also needs to repeat as long as the countdown timer variable is more than zero. We could just have this timer start counting down as soon as the screen is shown to the player. However, the player won't have any indication that the game has already started, which might not be what you want. So for that, we have another global variable called start timer, which will be set to true or false, depending on if you want the timer to be counting down or not. At the beginning of the game, the variable has the value false because that is how it's initialized. That means that once the screen is shown to the player, the timer won't automatically start because this if statement is false. Once the variable is set to true, the timer will start counting down. For this tutorial, I've set the start timer to true once the player has made the first button press or click with the mouse, and that is done in the click counter function. Let's have a look at this function next. So here we have the function, which is defined in an init Python block at the top of the script. Because we're going to be changing two of the global variables values, we need to declare them as globals first, which we do at the top of the function. Then to count how many clicks the player has made, we simply need to increment the variable called click times by one. So now every time this function runs, the variable will increase by one. 
Here we also have an if statement that checks if this variable is equal to zero, and if it is, we set the start timer variable to true, so the timer can start counting down in the screen. That's because we only need to set this variable to true the first time this function runs, and at that time this variable will be zero. To detect clicks instead of key presses, like in the example clip, we can simply use an image button. This image button is set to use an image of a cookie, and the action runs the click counter function as well when the button is pressed. In this case, we don't need to decide the action based on a condition, like we did with the key display table. Instead, we can use the sensitive property to determine whether or not the button's action should be allowed to run. Here, we refer to the count clicks variable to decide if the button is sensitive or not. Since this variable has a value true or false, this property will be set to true or false accordingly. This button I have also set to use a transform, which makes it zoom in and out when you hover and move away from it. That is done by checking for hover and idle events inside the transform, and then setting the zoom property to how big or small it should be. Now to show the player how many clicks they have made so far, and how much time they have left, we can use a text displayable using string interpolation. Here I have constructed a string by adding some normal text together with the variables click times and countdown time. These variables are used with square brackets inside the string to make sure they will be replaced in the game with the actual values. Once the timer has run out, I like the player in this case to see a piece of text on the screen as well as a button they can click on to play again. This text is dependent on how many clicks the player managed to do and is controlled with if statements. If the player clicked up to 9 times, for example, I want the text to say, well done. Then I have a few more if statements, in this case elif statements, that checks if the points are something different and then set the text to what I want in those cases. The play again button is an image button that when clicked runs an action that calls a function named reset click counter. This function will reset the game so it can be played again from the beginning. This image button also uses the same transform as I showed before, which causes the button to zoom in when hovered. Let's have a look at the reset function next. So here is the reset function, which is inside the init python block, together with the other function we looked at earlier. To reset the game back to the beginning, we simply need to reset the global variables it uses back to their initial values. And since we changed the values inside the function, we need to remember to declare them as globals as well. In terms of functionality of this minigame, the code we have looked at so far is all we need. For fun, I've also added a rotating image of some light rays behind the cookie to make it look more interesting. If you're interested in how I did this, I simply added an image to Spabel using the image of the rays and positioned it where I wanted it behind the cookie. Then I used a transform that I called rotate rays that rotates the image. This transform is set to rotate the image 360 degrees during 50 seconds with linear interpolation. It will also repeat once it's done, so it will keep rotating indefinitely. And that's all there is to the script. I hope you liked this tutorial and found it interesting. And if you did, I would appreciate if you pressed the like button and left a comment down below to let me know as it's really helpful for the channel. If you're interested in downloading the script, it's available on my Patreon for those in a tier supporter or higher, and a link to that is in the description box below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.